On February 4 of 1944, two PB-4Y U.S. planes flew a reconnaissance mission over Truck Lagoon in order to ascertain the strength of the enemy base there. Passing over the lagoon at high altitude, peering through dense cloud coverage, the awestruck flight crews could make out dozens of merchant vessels and numerous warships composed of nearly the entire Japanese combined fleet. The Japanese had spotted the recon planes and launched Zeros to give chase, but the U.S. pilots slipped away behind cloud cover and safely returned to the island base of Kwajalein of the Marshall Islands, but not before taking the first aerial photographs of the lagoon. To the delight of U.S. intelligence officers, the photos revealed at least two aircraft carriers and the super battleship Yamato sitting ducks at anchor within the lagoon. With this news, plans for Operation Hailstone went immediately into effect. The Japanese military now realized that Truk was no longer a safe harbor and that a major assault on their stronghold was imminent. Within a few weeks, the bulk of the warships had evacuated and the combined fleet was relocated to Palau, leaving the remaining forces and merchant ships in Truk at the mercy of U.S. air power. Thirteen days after the U.S. reconnaissance mission, Operation Hailstone commenced. On the morning of February 17, 1944, Task Force 50, which was comprised of nine aircraft carriers commanded by Admiral Spruance, approached Truck Lagoon within 100 miles to the northeast, undetected. Although confident, the U.S. pilots indeed must have felt anxious about the raid on Truck. Little was known about the overall defenses of the lagoon and heavy casualties were to be expected. At dawn, the first wave of 70 Hellcat fighter planes approached the outer reef of Truck Lagoon with the sole objective of gaining air superiority by bombing the airstrips and destroying any aircraft in the air or on the ground. For unknown reasons, the Japanese defenses at Truck were expecting the U.S. to raid at a later date and were caught completely unaware of the approaching U.S. fighters. Only a handful of Japanese Zeros managed to make it to the air to fend off the attack, and most were readily shot down in fierce air-to-air -air combat. <laughs> 